We just got the Jeffrey Epstein of the music and entertainment industry. The new lawsuit that just dropped against Diddy is massive and it has photos, it has videos, it names names. And there's so much here that it's never gonna fit into a single video. So I'm gonna do a quick overview in this video and then I'm gonna do a couple of parts breaking down all the different aspects of what's come out so far. We're talking crime scenes. We're talking photo evidence of celebrities like Cuba Gooding Jr. We're talking record label executives. We're talking hidden cameras in every room of the house getting recordings of celebrities, executives, politicians, at parties with celebrities and underage girls, with drinks being spiked, with drugs. This goes all the way back to the murder of Tupac and Biggie. We're talking about the entire rap and hip hop industry and the whole music industry at large. But to be clear, this is just opinions and speculation. These are not statements of fact. When I show sources in the background, like the court case, you should take those for just what they are. I'm not saying that all of this is necessarily real. So what's happened just now is that this man, Rodney Jones, who is a music producer that worked with Sean Combs, who is Diddy, he just filed this lawsuit. And he didn't just file it against Diddy, he filed against the executives at all of the companies associated and against the companies like Universal Music Group. His lawyers claim that he has secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Diddy and his staff and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. It's illegal for lawyers to make these claims if they don't have reasonable belief that this evidence is legitimate and exists. They could get disbarred for making these claims if they're not true. And some of that evidence is present in this lawsuit, like when Diddy allegedly shot a man. And then the LAPD saw that room in the photo, the bathroom with all that blood, and were on the scene for hours and no arrests were made. They went with the explanation that Diddy told his staff to give, which was it was a drive-by shooting. Diddy made it clear that his head of security, Fahim Muhammad, had the power to make people and problems disappear. This guy. And all of Diddy's staff were instructed to contact Mr. Muhammad if they were ever pulled over by the police in Miami or California. Diddy often bragged about having law enforcement under control. Although the deeper you look, the more it looks like people above him and above law enforcement had him under control. We'll go more into these cases in the detailed videos, but now the bigger picture. See, Diddy has been one of the most powerful people in the rap industry ever since the 90s when he founded Bad Boy Records. And he was only 24 when he founded it. He started his career as a non-paid intern at a and until he was then fired in 1993 when he was 24 and founded his own label, Bad Boy Records, later that year. So how does a 24-year-old found a massive record label on his own. Well, when you dig further, you realize it wasn't on his own. It was with the help of Clive Davis, his mentor. And the further into it all you dig, you realize that Clive Davis came out as gay later on. And there's a lot of rumors that him and Diddy were in a relationship throughout this time. This is gonna come up over and over and over, just by chance. Clive Davis has been running significant portions of the music industry since our parents were kids listening to music. Responsible for artists like Aretha Franklin, Alicia Keys, The Grateful Dead, then later Usher, Outkast, Pink. But back in the 60s and 70s, like Janis Joplin, Santana, Aerosmith, Pink Floyd, like, come on, read it. Jones specifically claims that they were trying to groom him to do gay stuff, which has long been the talk of the town in the rap industry by people that aren't with it. Diddy allegedly showed him a tape from a secret recording that he just happened to have of, of Jones's idol having gay sex with some white guy. And then Diddy apparently told Jones that he had engaged in gay sex with this redacted rapper and that redacted rapper and his idol, Stevie J. And apparently he also promised to make sure that Jones would win producer of the year at the Grammys if he did gay stuff on camera. Although, to be clear, he wasn't explicitly saying on camera, but... Mr. Jones discovered that Diddy had hidden cameras in every room of his home. I'm gonna guess that Diddy didn't learn how to wire a whole house with cameras on his own. Kanye has accused Diddy of being a fed many times. Diddy's also been accused of ordering the hit on Tupac many times. And when Diddy was asked about this on a podcast, this was his response. So we, don't, we don't talk about things that are nonsense. We don't even entertain nonsense, my brother. So we not even gonna even go there with all due respect, but. I appreciate you as a journalist asking. When you start digging into allegations of the CIA, the FBI, the Mossad having te tentacles in the music industry, you wind up at total rumors like this. Former CIA agent admits agency created gangster rap to fill private prisons by glamorizing criminality. 
claims like famous hip hop lyrics of the legendary hip hop outfit NWA were even scripted by a team of psychologists and war propagandists inside the CIA, according to this former agent. Obviously, these are just totally rumors and conspiracy theories, no truth to this whatsoever. But it leads you to people like Lior Cohen, who might be the most influential person in the last hundred years of music, because he ran Def Jam and made Jay-Z who he is, including Med Red Man, Method Man, DMX, Ja Rule, Ludacris. But it doesn't stop with rap music. We got Bon Jovi, Mariah Carey, Shania Twain, Elvis Costello, Ashanti, Nickelback, Slipknot, Sum 41, The Killers, Slayer. But then we've also got his protege, Julie Greenwald, that got elevated through this merger that he brokered and managed the Black Keys, Bruno Mars, Death Cab for Cutie, Jason Rantz, Kid Rock, Lupe Fiasco, Wiz Khalifa. That would be this Julie Greenwald. And then we've got Lucian Grange, the CEO of Universal Music Group. He's the one that is directly implicated and named in this lawsuit. It is alleged that he attended these parties with underage girls and with sex workers, and he knew that they were spiking drinks, et cetera, et cetera. But when you're talking about Diddy, you got to also talk about Justin Bieber, um, who was managed by Scooter Braun, along with Kanye West, Ariana Grande, Demi Lovato, et cetera. Um, Scooter Braun is a really big player in the modern music industry. We also got Psy, Carly Rae Morris, uh, Martin Garrix, Kanye West, Black Eyed Peas, David Guetta, Lil Dicky. So you might not remember, but back in the 90s, um, Tupac and Biggie were both coming up. And they were both talking about leaving their records that we've shown the people involved in those records already and starting their own. And Tupac was starting to speak out a little bit maybe about the state, the nature of the industry. Diddy was close in the middle of that. And there's a lot of rumors that he ordered the hit on Tupac. Diddy sort of rose to power on the power vacuum of Tupac and Biggie both leaving the scene. And he has been manipulating and running a huge portion of the industry from the inside ever since. And this court case directly alleges with lots of evidence that he has been running a sexual blackmail scheme that entire time. Promoting artists that would engage in the sexual blackmail scheme and then do their bidding there because there's not just him acting alone. And pushing out, ostracizing, blacklisting, attacking artists that wouldn't. So, uh... Maybe you should go back and listen to some of Kanye's interviews and see if he sounds quite so crazy after all. We just got the Jeffrey Epstein of the music and entertainment industry. The new lawsuit that just dropped 